So I'm updating my uh, website. It's the native scripting website where I have some of my courses and I've built this on Gatsby version one and now I'm version five, I think is the latest one. It took a while to update it. One thing that I did not update yet and that has to do with classes in React. Using React, I've been leaning more towards functions instead of classes for components. I'm gonna try using ChatGPT to do the refactoring for me. It's not that hard to refactor it myself, I know but I just wanna plug it in, see what it spits out and see if that works. If you're not a React dev, I'm gonna show you another refactoring that ChatGPT is pretty good at. So here I've got a component post.tsx and by the way, I think I have a lot of these. Yeah, most of this code base is built with classes instead of functions. We'll start with this one. By the way, this is what it looks like. There's the site, go to articles, and then there's articles right there. Here's the latest one. And I want it to basically be the same. I don't want it to break. So I'm gonna copy this. Let's go to ChatGPT. And I'm gonna say refactor this code not to use a class, but instead use a function. I'm gonna give it a colon and just paste that in, have it figure everything out. Let's see what happens. Instead of using a class, you can convert the code to a functional component and use hooks for the component did mount lifecycle. Yeah, I do have a component did mount here. So that might be a little tricky spot right there for those of you that are React devs. Is it done yet? Oh God, it's so slow now. Oh. What happened? It just stopped. I guess my code was too long. I'm gonna say continue. Oh. Come on, that's supposed to be a code block. Good Lord, what is it doing? Unexpected. This is not scripted, obviously. Let's pop these open side by side so I can see what's going on here. Wow, I just confused ChatGPT. Now it's got the explanation inside a code block. Well, the whole idea here was that I didn't have to do it myself. Let's copy this code. Now I can't just overwrite and paste because it's gonna break some stuff. So what did it do here, really? That was not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna paste everything here. Now I'm gonna have to fix some stuff up here. We've got this return statement, but then we got an extra bracket. I'm gonna get rid of that. And this should be good, I think. We don't have any complaints. Hey, that worked. There's a maximum limit to how much ChatGPT will output. And if your code is going to be longer than that, you might have to break it up into parts. This particular code file that I pasted in was over 200 lines of code. The component itself was much smaller. I did try this on a smaller component, selecting just the class component itself. No imports, no GraphQL queries, and ChatGPT did much, much better this time around, even having a chance to explain what it did at the end. The code itself did contain typings, even though the language was detected as JavaScript, it was TypeScript that ChatGPT spit out. I was able to just paste it back in and replace the code without any errors. I wanna move on, everything is fine, everything is working, let's take a look at some other refactorings that I just did. This is a common thing in software engineering. We're gonna refactor stuff, no matter what language you're using. That's another little tip I'm gonna show you right now, which is really cool. So I have this class bird and bird has a switch statement in it. And the switch statement calls different functions to return the speed of a different kind of bird. Now that's not a very clean way of writing your code. You don't want each case in the switch statement calling out to different functions. It's just messy and hard to read and hard to follow. So here I said refactor the code and it did a great job as the first step to refactoring the code. It pulled out all those functions and here it just nice and cleanly called each one of the functions from the case statements. All right, it's much easier to read. You're still calling functions, but it's much easier on the eyes and therefore better. Everything that's easier on the eyes and easier to read is better. That should be like the number one thing you learn in software development. Make things clean and easy to read because most of the time you're reading code, you're not writing code. Now, if you're doing object-oriented programming, this is an example of object-oriented. Maybe you're not, maybe you're doing functional, whatever your thing is. If you are doing object-oriented, you can also use polymorphism to get rid of this switch statement. There's pluses and minuses to using polymorphism, and I'll go into this in another video, which I'll link to down below when I get that up. But if you do this with polymorphism, you're essentially gaining a way to add functionality faster, add different types of birds quicker, and you get rid of this switch statement that you'd have to maintain if you were to add another bird. So here's an example of that. I asked ChatGPT to refactor the same code using polymorphism, and here's what it did. It created 
created a base class for bird and then each type of bird european african norwegian they extend bird and have their own way to calculate their speed now all you do is call get speed on whichever bird you got doesn't matter you don't care what bird was passed in into your consumer function all you care about is that it's a bird and that it has the get speed function which if it's a bird it will you call get speed of the bird you don't care about what bird it is so you're not going to be checking for switching between european or african or norwegian no doesn't matter now you got a polymorphic approach to that problem this example is in java but what if i wanted to use this in typescript and here is a really cool thing just as a bonus here for this video chat gpt can actually convert into a different language if you found some code online for example on stack overflow and uh, it's in a different language a good example of this is if you're doing ios development and you found some objective c code converted to uh, swift code you can do that so here i say convert to typescript and there we go it converted that whole java code to typescript cool saved me a lot of of changing the return types changing it from double to number all the syntax here is handled for me here's another example of chat gpt refactoring nested if statements oh god this is ugly code right here this could have been a result of junior developers adding additional checks while being afraid to modify the existing code happens all the time you end up with a nested if structure like this which is easily refactorable of course you can do this yourself or you can just pop it into chat gpt it does a pretty good job what it chose to do in this case is create a single boolean constant that combines all the booleans and then uses one if statement to check it getting rid of for loops that operate on arrays is another good example yes uh, this was actually written by me but to be fair it was five years ago okay hey i used to like for loops but there's better ways to work on arrays for example chat gpt use the arrays built in for each function to iterate the arrays instead of using for loops not only does the code become more concise and easier to read it also avoids the use of var which is not recommended due to scoping issues that could arise so there we go some examples of refactoring with chat gpt hope you enjoyed this if you did consider subscribing i do lots of different developments developer focused videos here and if you like this video also give it a thumbs up thank you very much folks thanks for spending some time here and i'll see you in the next one